Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial, I will show you how to deploy your SSIS package to file system using the manifest file. So this is my profile. I have 13 plus years of experience on Microsoft technologies. So the agenda of today's video tutorial is how to deploy the SSIS package using the manifest file. So recently I got a question from one of my subscriber Ranjit and I thought to make a video on this particular thing. So let's jump to the demo. So this is my blank SSIS package that I will modify today just to import a small CSV file into the SQL server table and then I will generate the manifest file and then I will show you how we can just deploy the package and before that we will of course create an XML configuration file and then we will see how it will work. So I got this email underscore info CSV file and this contains 1000 records. So we will be importing this particular file to the SQL Server table. So we got two SQL Server instances, SQL Server 2017 instance and then SQL Server 2019 instance. And there is an email table in both the servers. Email table is empty right now. So let me quickly write the code to import this particular file into a SQL Server table on one of the server. So I'm just drag and drop the data flow task into the control flow window. And then I can just configure the data flow task. So I can use the flat file source to read the data from the CSV file. So let me just configure the flat file source. I can just click new to create a connection which can pull the data from the CSV file. Then I can browse the file. So my file is situated in the D files location and the file type is CSV. So I can just select this particular file, click open. If you click on preview, so data seems good here, click OK, OK. Now I can use an OLEDB destination to write the data into the email table and the email table exists on the work database. So let me create a new connection here. This is my connection to the work database on the SQL Server 2019 instance. So I will select this particular connection, click OK. From the data access mode, I will use table or view fast load and then I will select that email table. Click on mapping, so mapping seems good here, click OK. So this is very basic SSIS package and let me execute the SSIS package. So it should load the data into the email table in the SQL Server 2019 instance. So if I go back to the SQL Server 2019 instance, so there should be 1000 records in the table. So this seems good. Okay, so now let me just create an SSIS variable and I will call the variable as server. Maybe I can call it like server name. And then we can just modify the value of the server name just to change the servers from 2017 to 19 or 19 to 17. Okay, so the value, the default value that I will give to this particular server is this one, 2019 instance. Okay, so let me paste it here. And now let me just make the connection, the OLEDB connection dynamic. So I can just right click and go to the properties of it. In the expressions, I can just select the server name property. And then from the expressions, I will just assign the value from the server name SSIS variable to the this property, server name property. Click OK. OK. So now this connection is dynamic. And whatever value I will provide to this server name SSIS variable, that value will be passed to the OLEDB connection. OK. So this is good. Now what I can do, I can just make an XML configuration. But before that, what we need to do. So right now, this is the project deployment model. And if you right click, so there is there is an option that convert to package deployment model. So before the SQL Server 2012 version, we had only the package deployment model where we can just deploy one package at a time. If you right click on this particular project, so it will show you that convert to package deployment model. So it means that right now it is the project deployment model where you can deploy the complete project to the SSIS catalog. So let me just select this one, convert to package deployment model, click OK. This has converted the project to the package deployment model. So now this is the package deployment model, you can see it. Now let me just create an XML configuration file for this package. So you can just right click in the control flow and there is an option package configurations. So from here you can select the enable package configurations and then you can add a package configuration here. Click next. So the default configuration type is the XML configuration file. So I can just browse the XML file where I want to put my XML configuration file. So in the C directory, I will create a directory here named SSIS packages. And then in the SSIS packages, I will create a folder load email data. And in the load email data, I will put my configuration file and I will call the configuration file as config. I can click on save. 
so now this has saved the configurations here so if you are going to deploy this particular SSIS package to another server then you need to make sure that this path should exist on the another server so that's why I have used the C drive because C drive normally exists on all servers so I can just give this path now I can click next now from these properties I need to assign the value of the server name SSIS variable from the XML configuration so if you scroll down this is the server name SSIS variables under the variables option and if you expand this one so and if you expand property so there should be a value property so you can just select the value property that you want to assign the value of the SSIS variable server name from the XML configuration file now you can click on next and you can give any name here I will call it as config now click finish you can close this one so the XML configuration file has been created for this particular project and now if you go to that location see SSIS packages load email data so you will find this configuration file here and if I open this in a text editor then you can see that we got a server name SSIS variable here and the value for this particular server name SSIS variable is this one 2019 instance so whatever value is given here the SSIS package will use that value to run the SSIS package so for example right now it is 2019 and if I change it to 2017 save this configuration file then the SSIS package should load the data to the 2017 instance okay so le let me show you that particular thing so, so right now we, we got 1000 records in the SQL Server 2019 instance and at the SQL Server 2017 instance the table is empty and now if I will execute the SSIS package then data should be loaded to the SQL Server 2017 instance okay although the value in the variable is 2019 but because the value in the configuration file is 17 so that's why the data should be loaded to the 2017 instance so let me run this particular query so you can see that the data got loaded to the SQL Server 2017 instance okay so like this is the thing like how we can configure the XML configuration file now here comes the main part like how we can generate the manifest file which can be actually deployed to the another server so if you right click on the project and go to the properties and if you click on the deployment so there is an option here create deployment utility so by default this is false so we need to set it to true but before going that if you click on the general so the target server version is SQL Server 2019 instance so for now for this particular demo I need to change it to SQL Server 2017 instance because the installation package for the SSIS 2019 is not working on my laptop it is working for 2017 so that's why I need to change the target server version to the SQL Server 2017 so now I just changed it and now I can go to the deployment model and now I need to change this create deployment utility to true but before doing that let me show you the bin folder like what kind of directory right now it contains so let me show you the current files so if I op right click and click here open containing folder and if I double click the bin folder so in the bin folder right now there is only one folder de development folder there is no deployment folder here okay and now let me go back to the SSIS package and right click on the project and click on properties and in the deployment we can just change from false to true and click apply okay and now let me just rebuild the project so as soon as you will rebuild the project a new folder should be created here so this is the new folder deployment and if you double click on the deployment folder so you will see that this is the package that actually will do the work and this is the configuration file and this is the dot SSIS deployment manifest file which will be used to deploy your project to another server or maybe on this server as well now for example if you are going to deploy your packages to another server then what you can do is actually you can just copy this deployment utility to another server and then as soon as you have copied this and pasted it on another server then what you can do you can just right click on the deployment manifest file click open and now this should open this package installation wizard if you are having issues while opening this package installation wizard then the, this particular wizard is actually open using this particular exe sql server 2017 but if your sql server 19 is working fine then you can open this particular exe file as well so that should be okay and now if you click on next so there are two options here the packages can be deployed to either file system or to the sql server deployment deployment to file system is simply like copying all these three files to a particular 
folder on a file system and deploying to the SQL server is like deploying all these packages to the MSDB database in the SQL server. So for this particular video, I will use this file system deployment. So I can just click next and now I need to browse the folder on which folder I need to deploy these files. So I can just browse that folders in my laptop in the C drive. I created a folder SSIS packages and in the SSIS packages I created a folder load email data. So I can just select this particular folder and for example if I open this folder so right now I got only the configuration file here okay but as soon as the deployment will be successful all three files should be copied to that particular location so I can click next next and then now it is asking for the configuration file so I can click next finish so this has finished the deployment and if you open that particular location so the package has been copied and the configuration file has been copied because these two files are required to run the SSIS package. Now for example if you want to run this SSIS package on a particular schedule then you can create a SQL agent job and then you can just schedule this SSIS package to run on that particular schedule. And if you want to change any configuration then you can just modify the XML configuration file. You can modify the value here if you want to run it for another server. So you can change the value for this particular configuration file and that should be okay. So I think that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button. Do subscribe to our channel. Press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much.